Hello, Stony Brook, and thank you for joining us today. I'm Eric Liu. And I'm Andy Mabra. Welcome to the first SBU News Show of the year. The state's requirement that medical professionals get the flu vaccine is now a thing of the past. Here's Alexander Flahev with a story. A New York State judge stopped the regulation that all health care providers receive the seasonal flu vaccine. The decision came after three nurses filed a lawsuit saying mandatory vaccinations violate their civil rights. The potential regulation is dividing health care personnel at Stony Brook. Jenna Antine, a student in the Physician's Assistant Program, received the vaccine but doesn't think the new regulation is fair. If you really are opposed to it and don't mind getting sick, then it shouldn't be the government telling you you have to get it. The injection is usually painless and can't give you the flu. Some healthcare professionals think the potential regulation is in the best interest of the patient. It's been shown that when healthcare workers are vaccinated, it's much better in terms of the amount of healthcare workers that are becoming ill with influenza and the amount of patients that get influenza too. Medical director and infectious disease expert Susan Donnellan thinks those opposed to the regulation don't have good reason because the seasonal flu vaccine isn't the only one mandated for healthcare professionals. The people that are opposed to the mandate um, have a bit less precedent to stand upon because they're already, they already need to be compliant with things such as uh, varicella immunity or receipt of the varicella vaccine, uh, hepatitis B vaccine series, MMR, annual tuberculosis testing, and so on. So the, the idea of having a mandatory influenza vaccine actually already has precedent both in New York State and nationally. The vaccine is already mandatory for employment in many health care institutions across the country, but New York was the first state to require it. This is Alexandra Flahiv reporting for Stony Brook University. Talking on the phone while driving has sparked a national safety concern, but now texting while driving has become a more prominent and even deadlier issue. Eric Liu has the story. Text messaging has become a fixture in American culture, as people send messages to their friends and family every day. But here's what they don't know. It could kill them. Texting itself is generally harmless, but becomes a hazard when drivers, especially younger ones, start doing it on the road, turning the situation into a recipe for disaster. The uh, person is four times more likely to have an accident while texting than, than actually using a cell phone. So the, the odds are a lot greater when you're texting. Texting is especially more difficult because drivers have to take their eyes off the road, which is why studies show that texting drivers are as dangerous as drivers who are under the influence. Before I re-ended the SUV, I looked at my phone, like, it was about to turn red light, it was yellow light, I thought I had enough time to break before I would run into the SUV. Uh, young drivers don't realize that it takes a split second split second to have an accident. Jeff learned that lesson the hard way, but now has a few words of advice. They shouldn't text and drive. Stony Brook student Ivan Z doesn't text while he's driving and uses a hands-free device for calls. I never call somebody, even though I have that Bluetooth function, I never do the calling itself. It's just more of a, uh, receiving calls. Not everybody's going to be like Ivan, so just leave the phone at home. For Stony Brook University, I'm Eric Liu. Sarah Kazadi tells us about the campus's new food provider and what students think. Seven weeks into the semester, students at Stony Brook are noticing a change in campus dining. I can definitely say that the eating places look different. There's um, more stations, like the yogurt station in the sack. The change comes courtesy of Lackman Culinary Services, who signed a five-year deal over the summer to replace Chartwells as the university's main food provider. Now, the largest food service company in the Northeast is taking on the task of improving quality and pleasing a very diverse student body. We provide locally grown foods. Um, we only use fresh uh, fruits and vegetables. We, tr we truly try to find the highest quality product. Um, and we think that it's more beneficial to the student uh, in the sense that obviously eating proper food is good for brain function. Gone is a Taco Bell and H Quad, replaced by a yet to be named Mexican food stand. Also, the Kelly Dining Center sports a new, strictly vegan station, hoping to give those students more options. Lagman has even implemented the Under program, promoting smaller, ready made items with fewer calories and pricing them at $3 or less. The reviews have varied, but many students feel that the change hasn't necessarily been tasty. It's 
not good. <laughs> it's like, it's really expensive too, like this yogurt was five dollars. There's more kinds of food this year, so that's better, but it's still the same price and it's way overpriced still, so it's not that great. <laughs> a lot of the stuff is fried, there's not a lot of healthy options, and if there are healthy options, they're usually like three times more expensive for less food than the unhealthy options. In order to gain their favor, the new food provider will have to find a way to please not just their taste buds, but their wallets. For Stony Brook News, I'm Sarah Kazadi. Scientists at Stony Brook University are researching if there is water on the moon. Christina Positano has the story. Geology professor Timothy Glotch is working with NASA for the 2020 moon mission to answer the question scientists have asked for years. Is there water on the moon? To find out if water is on the moon, scientists created the Diviner Lunar Radiometer Experiment that uses instruments to create detailed global maps of the moon's surface temperatures. And if they find below freezing temperatures or cold traps on the maps, it is likely that those areas have ice, which would prove water exists there. We've never made those measurements at the moon before. We've taken data from telescopes, um, but they're low spatial resolution. So here we have relatively high spatial resolution. But as recently as this week, experts believe that Diviner can come closer to discovering what the moon is made of when a lunar satellite known as LCROSS crashes into the moon. We'll take data over the spot where LCROSS does impact and it's going to make a big plume or a big cloud. And we're going to look at that cloud and see if there's any hints of water in there. But for geology major Bryce Lynch, whose faculty advisor is Glotch, the upcoming moon mission is reminiscent of his grandfather's role in Apollo 11. He worked on the lunar module mission, did a lot of the closed vacuuming systems, which pretty much landed the lunar module on the, on the moon itself. Students here and beyond will be able to learn more about Diviner's findings in the next few years as the technology advances. For Stony Brook University, this is Christina Positano reporting. Were speed limit signs at South Piedmont really ever changed? Anna Aguilar has a story. Students were under the impression that when these signs were put up, that the speed limit was reduced to 5 miles per hour. But James O'Connor, Director of Transportation and Parking, explains what really happened. We actually never changed any speed limit uh, in South Pilot. And uh, when I tell students this and I tell other colleagues this, especially our bus driving staff, um, they're actually sometimes shocked and surprised that they, because they, they were under the assumption that the, the speed limit in that parking lot um, may have been different than what is the, the posted signage that's on there today. According to Stony Brook University's Vehicle and Pedestrian Traffic Parking Regulations, 5 miles per hour is the speed limit for all campus parking lots. Renee Hartage, a commuter student, has noticed a change in some drivers. Um, I think the buses are driving slower. I don't think the cars are. <laughs> For instance, that bus is going slower, but see the car behind it? It's not going as slow as the bus. Students feel rushed between finding a parking spot and waiting online for the bus. Traffic and parking operations have informed the bus drivers about the speed limit and asked them to pass the word on to the students. They are also working closely with the university police, encouraging them to enforce the speed limit. Traffic and parking operations is targeting certain areas on campus for sign improvement. This is part of a new effort where they hope to fix signs on campus. For the School of Journalism, I'm Anna Aguilar. And now Carol Moran with today's entertainment story. Students took a class in tarot card reading at the University Bookstore. Here's Gabby Preto and Gabriela Pena Herrera reporting. Psychic reader and healer Melanie Murphy came back to the Stony Brook campus to teach students about tarot cards. She had students pick cards and have them try to read the meaning on their own. The second thing that came to mind was it kind of reminds for some reason it makes me think of women. My cards, they uh, they told like a lot about me. Some students were surprised and impressed at the outcome and accuracy of their tarot readings. The event showed students a different outlook on life and what to make of it. Let's make the world a better place. Let's use the knowledge of ourselves to be able to control the way in which we do things. And let's go out into the world with understanding ourselves and understanding others. And as I, as I say to everyone, know what I say.